Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to show you how we can make this dynamic rotating typography. This video is part of the kinetic typography series that I'm working on. If you have an idea that you would like to suggest, please comment below. Specifically in this video, we'll go through three main concepts. The first one is how to use the function text to points that returns an array of points outlining the text that we want to display. The second one is the concept of trigonometry that allows us to convert from polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates so that we can draw our text in a circular pattern. And third, the concept of oscillation so that we can get that oscillating movement that you see just now. To use the text to points function, we need to first prep our sketch by preloading the font. We can do that by come here to this arrow, click the plus sign, and then you want to create folder. I'm going to name my folder fonts. And then you're going to click the arrow here and then upload file. And this is where you're going to drag and drop your font file in here. Once your font is uploaded, you're going to go back to sketch.js and then you're going to first declare a new variable. I'm going to call it font. And then you're going to write a function called preload. And this function is where you're going to be preloading your font into the sketch. Then you're going to set the variable font to a function called load font. Inside this parentheses, you want to tell the computer where your font file is. And in my case, it's in the folder called fonts. And my file is called roboto-black.ttf. And that's exactly what you want to write in the parentheses. And then you want to put a quotation mark and then fonts backslash roboto dash black dot ttf. All right, I'm just going to click play to make sure that everything works. All right, and it's working. Next, we're going to use the text to points function to get an array of points that outline the text that we want. I'm going to declare two variables. The first one is going to be of the type array, and I'm going to call it points. Then points is where we're going to keep that array of points that outline our text. And then I'm going to declare another variable called message msg. And I'm going to set the string of text that I want to write. So it has to be in the quotation mark because it's going to be of the type string. And I want to write the word hello with an exclamation mark. To use the text to points function first, you're going to set the array that you have created. So in my case, points to the variable that you set your load font function to. So font and then dot and then text to points. And text to points takes in a total of five arguments, but only three are required. The first one is the string of text that you want the array of points that outline that text. And then the second and third one are the X and Y location of the bottom left corner of the box that bounds the text. So for us, it's going to be the message variable here, right? So MSG. And then for X and Y location, I'm going to set it to 0, 0. And you might be wondering why, because 0, 0 at the bottom left corner, that will be off the screen. And that is because I want to set it to 0, 0 and then translate that origin point to somewhere else inside the draw function. All right, so now why don't we try to draw it out? So I'm going to use a for loop, and the for loop will loop through i equals to 0 to the length of the array. So i less than points dot length, i plus plus. And then inside the for loop, we're going to, let's first just draw out the point. So I'm going to use the point function. And the point function takes in a total of two arguments, so the x and y coordinate of each of the points. So for our case, it's going to be points of i dot x and then points of i dot y. All right, so like I said, you don't see anything. You kind of see some dots here. And that is because we put it at 0, 0. So let's translate it. How about we translate it a little bit to the right? So maybe 20 pixels and then 300 pixels down. All right, so you can kind of see it here, but not really. It's very small. And that's where we want to put the fourth argument of the text to points function, which is the size. So how about we actually set a variable called size and let's set it to 300. All right, so it's kind of large. So let's also change the canvas size to 800. How about that? Okay, so you can see the word hello. So let me actually just change from point to ellipse real quick. So to show you 
All right, so now we have drawn ellipses on the points that are inside the points array that we get from text points function. Now we want to draw a line that connects each of these points to another point, and that other point will be moving in a circular pattern. So for us to find the location of those points, we need two variables, the radius that we want the line to be, or the distance from these points to the other point, and then the angle at which it's going to be traveling in a circular motion. So let's first set those variables. So let R, how about set it to 15, and then we're going to set the angle, the initial angle at zero. We're going to be using the angle mode degree, so I'm going to set degrees here. Now that we have declared the variables are an angle that represent the polar coordinates, in order for us to draw it on our canvas, we actually need Cartesian coordinates of x and y. To do that, we need to use trigonometry to convert from polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. I have a separate video that I made that explained the details of how to do that, so you can check that out. But essentially, we need two equations. The first one is x equals to r times cosine of angle, and the second one is y equals to r times sine of angle. All right, so we have these two equations. Now, we're not gonna draw a point anymore. We are going to draw a line. And this line is going to connect each of these points to another point, right? Which is going to start from these points, plus the new location, right? Which is a specific distance away at a specific angle. And then for y, it's going to be the same thing. All right, let's try this. And what you see here are all of these lines that are horizontal at a distance of r, which is 15. And it is horizontal because at angle equals to zero, x now equals to 15, right? Because cosine of zero is one, one times 15 is 15, and x now equals to 15. As for y, sine of angle or sine of zero is zero. So that's why it's horizontal because y is equal to zero. All right, so now that we have this straight line, we actually want it to move. So we can do that by incrementing the angle. How about we do it by one degree at a time? All right, so now all of these lines are moving in a clockwise direction, one degree at a time. Next, what we want to do is that we want to draw a text on top of it, right, of the same size and same location. And we can do that by using the function called text. And the text function takes in a total of three arguments. The first one is the string of text that you want to write, and then the second and third are the x and y location of the bottom left corner of the bounding box of that text, which is the same as the text to points first three arguments, right? So we're going to put MSG here as well, and then let's do 0, 0. And we can put 0, 0 here because we have already translated the origin point to 20, 300 here. And then we can play. All right, so this is not what we want. You can see the text hello being displayed here, right? But we actually want it to be of the same size and of the same font as the text that we have outlined it here. So we can use two other functions. The first one is text font, and we need to put the font argument in here, and we already have that, which is our font here, right? So we just put in that variable font. All right, so we have the same font now, but the size is not correct. So we need another function called text size. And we're going to put our variable size in here. All right, that looks better. But as you can see here, it's not moving with the lines. So actually, we don't want to place it at 0, 0, right? What do we want to place it? We want to place it at x, y, right? We want the bottom left corner of the bounding box of this text to be at the location of x comma y. So let's try that. All right, so it's moving along with these bottom left corner point. Perfect. 
what we did just now is that we had the word hello move in the circular pattern right one angle or one degree at a time but what if we want to make it oscillating back and forth we can do that easily by using the concept of oscillation specifically the simple harmonic motion the simple harmonic motion is special because it can be represented by the sine or the cosine function. The output range of the sine and the cosine function is between negative one and one, right? That gives it the oscillating motion. So we're gonna put that instead of the increment, the constant increment that we put here as one. To do that, first, let's just set a new variable called increment, and I'm gonna set it to, let's do a sine function of t, right? And so t is also going to be a new variable and we're going to start it at zero. We're going to increment t by one, and we're going to put increment in here instead of the constant one degree at a time. So right now, increment, as t increments by one, it outputs a value between negative one and one, right? So let's give this a try. All right, do you see that? It just moves back and forth. So the angle changes by between one and negative one. But if we want a bigger motion, right, all we need to do is we just need to give it a bigger amplitude. So right now it's at one, so we can multiply. Let's do five here. All right, so we get an larger motion and also faster as well. So you can play around with the increment here to get the oscillating motion that you want. Now to the last step, let's beautify it. So I'm just gonna change the color of the background and the color of the stroke and the color of the text. To get the salmon color, I'm going to change the background to this. All right. And then I'm going to give the stroke color to white. Okay, and then for the text, I want to fill it with white as well, but I want to give the transparency or the alpha value to 100, so it's a little bit transparent. Perfect. Before I end here, I want to touch on the last argument of the text to points function that I haven't touched on yet. So in here, you can put in another argument Start by a comma. This one is special. You need a curly bracket. And it has a total of two arguments. The first one is called sample factor. The syntax is a little bit different too. So you put the word sample factor and then a colon and then a number. So let's put 0 0.1, which is the default value. So if we click play, nothing happens because this is the default value. But what if we increase it by, let's do 0 0.2. What do you notice? There are a lot more lines, right? So the sample factor is the resolution of your points. The bigger the number that you put in your sample factor, the larger the number of points that are returned from the array, from the text to points function. So you get a better resolution. The second argument is called simplify threshold with a default value of 0.0. .0. So if we click play, nothing happens. All right, but if we change it to 0 0.1, you can see that a lot of the points are taken out. So the simplified threshold is a threshold that removes the collinear points. So you can play around and it's gonna determine the number of points that you want on your text. But I'm gonna keep it at 0 0.0. This is one example of how to use the basic concepts we learn in this channel to create an interesting kinetic topography. If you have another suggestion, be sure to comment down below. Give this one a try.